Okay, so in the last video, I was showing all of these ways of using iteration to rotate uh, and to fade some sort of in animations, either with an image or with some drawing commands. And uh, now I want to show you, because in the other videos I was doing all of this, this manually, right? So I'm just clicking and slowing down the rotation um, and setting my, my bound mode manually and also setting my fade time manually here by changing the value. Um, now I want to show you how you, you actually don't have to do this with a mouse. You could automate some of this so that you can, uh, you can either use live inputs, so something from maybe sound, maybe you're looking at sound levels in a space, um, or motion capture, or something from a microcontroller, to then influence these iteration values. Um, or what we're going to do is look at just some random generation of values and see, uh, see how that works and what that looks like. OK, right now I have my theta set to 0 0.06. Let's change that to 0.1. OK, we'll just leave our bound mode at 0 for right now and delete that. And we have our fade set to 1 as well. Um, by the way, right, we could subtract one, two, make it darker, and we would be slowly fading to black instead of white. Wow. Oh my goodness. That was really cool. Okay. Anyway, so we have these drunk objects over here, which are changing the color of our circles. We can use the same concept the same kind of drunk or random object to change the theta over time. So I'm going to say something, um, I'm going to do drunk 100 with a step size of 5. And actually, I'm doing this because drunk works in integers. Um, and I don't want integers here for my theta. I want something very small. Um, but I can't, can't give these floating point values to drunk. So I'm going to say 100, step size of 5, and then I'm going to immediately divide this by 100. And no, no, you know what? Let's not divide it. Let's scale this instead. That'll be a little bit more simple for my brain today. We're going to scale, and we'll say from 0 to 100, um, which is my, my range for my drunk object. Um, no, that's not right. Sorry. Is that right? Yes. Drunk is the maximum. Random is the range. Yes, maximum value. OK, so my maximum value is 100. So from 0 to 100, and then I'm going to scale that from um, my output value to be something that matches my, my desired theta range. So we liked this 0 0.01. I liked it. I don't know what you liked it. Watch what happens. Let's just drag this up. No, this gets really, really fast, like quite quickly. And I, I don't, I'm not a big fan. OK, also, I can go negative numbers. So negative spins the other direction. So maybe I want something like this. Maybe a good range for me, this is totally my choice, is negative 0.08 to, let's say, positive 0.08. Or maybe we'll just round to 0.1 to make it easy. So negative 0 0.1 to positive 0 0.1. Take a look at that. And we'll just hook this same, uh, same trigger out here to change this drunk object. And I guess uh, then we can just take this value. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. We're spinning a lot. We're spinning a little. I want, let's go back to our fading to white so you can see this happening a bit easier. And actually, let's reset to a tree. Whoa. Whoa. OK, this is looking pretty cool. So you can see that instead of just having one rotation that I'm changing, 
my output is slowly sometimes spinning to the left a little faster, and then it maybe sometimes goes back uh, to the right from uh, this drunk object changing the theta value. So you might be able to imagine that if you had some live input, like some sound, um, some sound levels, you could replace this stochastic output, this drunk object, with that live input, and then you could make your visuals respond in real time to that live input. Okay. I did this with rotation. There's nothing stopping you at all from doing this from other, uh, other attributes as well. So there's a whole bunch to choose from. Um, position is sort of interesting. That's a good one. Anchor point actually is a really interesting one uh, because the spin, rather from than being from the center constantly, we could change. Let's just show that real quick. I'm going to pull out my anchors. We'll do anchor x and anchor y. Well, actually, let me just do anchor. Uh, let me just do anchor x to start with. So instead of doing theta, well, actually, let's leave our theta. Okay, make a decision. Let's leave our theta, and we'll just add another drunk object. We'll make our maximum a little bit more than the center. So right now, the center is 160. Let's make it like 200 on the right-hand side. We'll be able to move our spinning point over to 200, and then we'll move it back to, I don't know, 120, something like that. Um, OK, so we'll take our same drunk object. Get out of the way here. So much space. Just move some of this over. Okay. Take our same, same drunk object. We'll just hook that up as well. And we'll just use the same scale object, except that we changed our output attributes to match theta for this one here. Here's theta. Move that up. You guys don't need this anymore. And so in this scale object, we're going to match our outputs to what we would like for anchor x. Almost had enough space there. And we'll put this here. And instead of this point 0.1, let's do, uh, what did I say, 120 to 200, something like that. OK. Is that enough for us to see what's happening? Yeah, so if you watch the center here, we should be changing slowly. I don't know that this is a big enough. Let's make this a bit more extreme. Like, I don't know, all the way across? How about from 0 to 320? Is that crazy? Whoa, OK, that's definitely better. So now you can see that this anchor point, this x anchor point, which, which uh, from top to bottom is going to stay right in the center. But where it's spinning from is moving to the left and to the right now. Maybe with these two things, the theta and the anchor running at the same time, it's a little bit harder to see. There it goes. Whoa. All right. So hopefully this gives you enough to imagine how then you might use this uh, random object or live input into a scale that then feeds into any of these rota attributes that you can change on the fly to create some live visualizations.